This is Lake Powell country. In southern Utah and northern Arizona, this vast meandering reservoir boasts a shoreline of 1,900 miles and holds nine trillion gallons of water. It was not until 1869 that John Wesley Powell mapped and informed the world of this region. It is for him the lake is named. With a mighty blast, the great undertaking of damming the Colorado River began in 1957. First, steel workers built the Glen Canyon Bridge. Two years later, construction began on Glen Canyon Dam. Workers slaved around the clock for three grueling years, mixing and pouring enough concrete to create a four-lane highway stretching from Phoenix to Chicago. In 1963, the last empty bucket was celebrated. Today, at the Carl Hayden Visitor Center, one can gain a clearer perspective of Lake Powell by viewing a scaled-down version. A self-guided tour begins with a brightly lit tunnel which leads to the dam's crest, a broad concave structure, 25 feet wide, more than 1,500 feet from cliff to cliff. Hundreds of feet below, a bridge leads from the dam to the power plant building. Inside, eight hydroelectric generators churn out enough electrical power to satisfy a city of a million people. The current jumps to conductors, then on to transmission lines carried by great leaning towers and is then distributed to light up the west. On the downstream side of the dam, Clear water swirls where was once the muddy Colorado. As we explore Lake Powell, our guide, historian, and mapmaker, Stan Jones. I was interested in uh, what kind of a lake would evolve out of the construction of Glen Canyon Dam. And tried to envision a lake. I thought, how could you lose? Uh, it's going to be magnificent. Every time I go out on the lake, I find something new. Every time, without question, I come home and I say, you know, I never noticed that before, or wasn't it nice to go into that canyon and see what I missed the last time I was in there? There's always something new, always.
Exploring Lake Powell is a project that could last a lifetime. Over a hundred canyons create a maze of coves and caves, bays and bridges, arches and waterfalls. This one is put to good use by Jones to have his boat washed. The many wonders of the lake can be overwhelming. First time adventurers are advised to take along a good map. The seemingly endless canyons are irresistible to die-hard explorers. You can't help but wonder what spectacular sight awaits behind the next color-drenched wall. But be warned, as the channels invite the visitor deeper and deeper along winding cliffs, the waterways shrink into tiny passages, and even the best navigators sometimes find themselves in a tight squeeze. In Lake Canyon years ago, Anasazi ruins were nearly inaccessible, but today a boat brings them up close. In the Escalante arm of Lake Powell, the clear blue channel acts as a highway to the past, linking modern man with primitive dwellings. As we follow Stan Jones up the cliffs, we are reminded that a large number of Anasazi Indians inhabited these canyons. In 800 AD, they found food, water, and protection here. What happened to these people, nobody knows. High above Forgotten Canyon is Defiance House Ruin. Here is seen one of the best examples of ancient art around Lake Powell. Pictures painted on the rock, pictographs. There are specific things in the canyons here that I go in to see periodically. I don't claim to have already seen them all because, like I say, every time I go someplace I see something new. But I know all the canyons here and some of the things in them are my friends and I go back to visit them periodically like you go to visit any of your friends. A ruin or a cave or a beautiful alcove or a running stream or a waterfall. These are the things that are in the canyons here and I love to go in and see them. How much there is to see is limited only by the hiker's ambitions. Short hikes near the shore uncover clear water streams amidst high desert vegetation, valleys eroded by time, and peaks rising hundreds of feet. For the more avid hiker, greedy for huge rock arcades and other signatures of time and early visitors, what better place than Lake Powell to tie up the boat and backpack deep into a land of scenic and pristine canyons? By leaving the sandy beaches and climbing upward, the hiker is rewarded by a grandeur that can't be observed from a boat. With every step, the hiker runs the risk of rediscovering history. What's left of this Hogan fights the sometimes brutal weather to keep the story of its inhabitants alive. Patiently, the ruin seems to wait to capture the interest of those who happen to stumble upon it.
To me, anything that has natural beauty or is pristine or quiet and peaceful is rewarding. So just walking into a pristine area, whether there's an Indian ruin there or not, or whether there's anything truly spectacular or not, I can feel that I've been rewarded by virtue of having the privilege of being in that quiet, peaceful place. To me, that's what life is all about. It's not uncommon to find Moki steps, footholds dug out of the stone by rock climbers hundreds of years ago. Time and the elements have worn the Moki steps to shallow indentations and can be dangerous to those who dare use them today. Jones plays it safe by knowing when to quit. That's about enough. Lake Powell country bears a treasure of historical markers. This wedge-shaped formation was blasted open by pioneers and is of significant importance to Mormon history. Known as Hole in the Rock, this mile-long ravine served as a descending passage suitable for driving ox-drawn wagons down to the Colorado River. In the 1880s, this heroic group from Utah left their mark upon the land on their way to settling a new territory across the river and Glen Canyon. Not a life was lost on the treacherous trip, and today, as Jones retraces the Mormon Trail in Cottonwood Canyon, wagon wheel tracks can be seen embedded in the shore of what was once the Colorado, tracks from 81 Mormon wagons. Breathtaking natural windows and arches exist in many of the canyons. This one, Waweep Window, stands 41 feet wide at its broadest point, 35 feet high, and is part of a cave. Another surprising formation is Jack's Arch, as if it were sliced out of the rock with a knife. The arch points like a steeple to the sky. But the most astonishing natural arch of all is Rainbow Bridge, one of the seven natural wonders of the world. This magnificent arch, impossible to fully capture on film or with words, is 275 feet wide and rises 290 feet. For years it had stayed hidden like a buried treasure, a well-kept secret until the early 1900s. Camouflaged in the striations of the rock is Keyhole Arch. And this, the second largest arch on the lake, is Stevens Arch. Incredibly balanced rocks are also a common phenomena in Lake Powell country. This one is the biggest. Rich in geological history, 
This land was once a dry desert where sand was whipped into dunes by scorching, swirling winds. Then a complete shift. Great seas of salt water pounded the dunes into mountains, mountains of sandstone. When the water disappeared, rich mineral deposits such as oxides of iron remained, casting huge streaks of color upon the earth. Then was the birth of the Colorado River, and forces deep within the planet shifted the land, helping the river to carve its course. With years of erosion and nature dancing upon the rock, what's left for us to enjoy are fantastic formations and graceful arches. During that time of change, huge mounds of molten rock oozed to the Earth's surface, forming these landmarks, the Henry Mountains to the north and Navajo Mountain to the south. Desert plants topped with blooming flowers grow wild across the land, draping the plateau in a patchwork of color. Marinas dot the shores. Dangling Rope Marina is accessible only by boat, located 41 miles up from Glen Canyon Dam. Hall's Crossing Marina is a natural harbor further up the lake. It sits in the mouth of Bullfrog Bay. On the north side of the bay is Bullfrog Marina, 97 miles north of the dam. The largest marina is Waweep, just three miles from the dam, six miles from the city of Page, Arizona. During late spring and summer, when the water heats up, so does the skiing. Not all sports here are this vigorous. The lake is also stocked for rest and relaxation. 
Fishing is a peaceful sport. Uh, I, I don't know any other sport, really, that's so peaceful. It's the only sport I know of that a child of four or five can engage in and a man 95 can en engage in and everybody in between. Do you know any other sport that you can start a child at, say, five years old and he can still be fishing if he lives to be close to 100? Oh, that's a nice one. Look at Woo! that. Catch of the day. All right. He's pretty. Lake Powell has some of the best fishing in the West. Since its beginnings, millions of fish were brought here, 13 kinds of game fish. Lake Powell Bass. Breakfast at Tiffany's. You got him. Man has always known the importance of waterways for transportation and exploration. Since the construction of Glen Canyon Dam, a whole new world was created, a world we can reach now as we explore Lake Powell.